Ooh. Amazing. She crunchy. Very crunchy. <laughs> so if she's already rotated this way, I'm pretty comfortable that her body's gonna let me adjust into it. Really clean. Nice. Nice. And just because she has a little bit of that bilateral pain, I'm gonna do it on each side. What's up everybody, Dr. Alec here with Sabrina. Um, and today we're going to be talking about what I could broadly call like a benign acute torticollis. Um, and I, I quantify it as benign because for any clinicians or students out there listening, I understand that a torticollis has many other acute causes. Um, so if you happen to notice that you have an intense new onset of headaches, swollen lymph nodes, um, paresthesia, numbness in your extremities, if you're having difficulty speaking, formulating words, swallowing, or using the restroom, then this video is not for you. But if you are the kind of person who went to bed perfectly fine, woke up in the morning with your neck in shambles, almost completely unable to turn your head to one direction, this video is for you. Um, so we have someone in the office who this happens to actually on a fairly regular basis. So Sabrina, in your own words, what do you experience with a torticollis? So I'll wake up in the middle of the night. My neck is very stiff. Like I'll kind of wake up in an awkward position and then like turning my head just like feels so stiff that I cannot move. And it like, it hurts down through my traps, like to my rhomboids, like almost like mid back. Gotcha. So like, yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, excruciatingly intense. Trying to rotate your neck with a torticollis is unbearable to painful at best. Um, and so from a technical standpoint, what's happening is your body is attempting to offload a contralaterally irritated facet. So what you're gonna see is a lateral bend in a contralateral rotation away. Um, off of the irritated facet. And then any movement away from that, that offloaded position is gonna be, it's gonna be incredibly painful. It's a pain spasm cycle at the end of the day is what a torticollis is. Um, so from a diagnostic standpoint, a lot of this is history, a lot of this is conversation. And, and frankly, there's not many orthopedics to do because the neck can hardly move. But in the absence of a paresthesia with acute axial spine pain, um, in a history like you just went to bed fine and woke up in pain, pretty confident, at least I'm comfortable with a working diagnosis of acute torticollis. Um, so the way we would start with treatment is, typically I would start with soft tissue. So let me get you on your back. You can't do too much too soon with a torticollis patient, um, cause they just won't let you. <laughs> but I'm gonna do a little bit of soft tissue work. Um, we're gonna do some, PNF stretching, some, some contract relax stretching, and then we're gonna head over to the dry needle bay because at the end of the day, this is an overactivity of the sternocleidomastoid, the levator scapula, and the trapezius, um, all kind of working together to crank your neck in that opposite direction. So those muscles kind of have to be released so you can at least give the facet joint that's irritated the biomechanical opportunity to not be um, cranked down in that pain spasm cycle. So for the sake of, um, just for the sake of the day, let's pretend that she has a, a right-sided torticollis or is experiencing pain on the right side of her neck. So I would just come through here, and it's important to remember that the levator scapulae, although it is, it is an upward rotator of the scapula, and it's gonna, uh, it's gonna, one of its attachments is down here. The levator scapula anchors on the transverse processes of the top four cervical vertebrae, so it ends up being important to do a lot of work up top. Is that tender up there for real? <laughs> yeah, it's is, actually, it, is, it, is this the it's side you actually have pain on? Both sides, okay. but like it's very tender. So I might be taking a little bit of a liberty with Sabrina's neck. Someone with a torticollis might not let me move it quite this much. <laughs> you okay with that? Yeah. You say it's this side as well? Mm -hmm. Bilateral? Oh mm -hmm. lord. <laughs> okay. Well, how often it happens, it just... I feel like it happens, happens once every six times. weeks. <laughs> Monthly. Monthly. <laughs> Maybe. So, uh, it's hard to say, it's hard to say what exactly causes the torticollis because you're, you're sleeping while it happens, but it's a, it's common if you have a window open or if you have a particular side of the room that the, the fan is on. So essentially like the direction of draft in your sleep, you turn away from that and end up irritating the facets on the side you turn into. So that's maybe something to keep in mind if you keep getting a torticollis on the same side of your neck. 
So this is me working on her traps a little bit. Mm. You okay? Mm-hmm. My traps are tight. Good Lord. They are tight. Mm-hmm. You feel it jumping? Well, yeah, right there. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, it's all good. All's well that ends well. Mm-hmm. And you said you got one, was it Saturday? Yeah. Maybe a little one, a baby uh, one? What? Was it Saturday? No, Friday. I guess you woke up Friday morning a little irritated. Mm -hmm. A little bit, and then it was worse Saturday morning, more so like in the middle of the night. I'll just wake up because I'm uncomfortable. I got you. So it's it's not it's gonna maybe lack a little bit of relevance because she's not in acute spasm, but. A way that I could get through a neck that is spasming harshly is I would say, Sabrina, could you push your head into this hand? Five, four, three, two, one. You could stretch it a little farther. And this is that stretch, relax, that contract, relax kind of stretching. And then from this new position, I would say, press into my hand again. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax. And I could kind of strip against that as I stretched it farther. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to come in and get her first rib. Look to your left for me. Grab that opposite shoulder. Ooh. Amazing. She crunchy. Very crunchy. <laughs> Look to your right for me. not nearly as stuck on that side. No. So I'll, I'll probably get that when she's face down in two seconds. And sometimes it can be difficult to manipulate someone with torticollis, and I may not manipulate on the first visit, but if there's any give after doing that PNF stretching and some of the soft tissue, uh, I'm gonna at least try to take what she'll give me. So if she's already rotated this way, I'm pretty comfortable that her body's gonna let me adjust into it. Really clean. Nice. Nice. So then, just to finish up in here, let me get you face down real quick. Good, sorry for messing up the makeup. Oh yeah, come on now. Oh, and my hair. I know. Oh man. Apologies. Oh, let me move this. Oh, fella. You okay? Now I'm good. <laughs> Lots of freebies. <laughs> so take a breath for me, Sab. Nice. You okay there? Yeah, I feel like there was more freebies than. Uh, the, <laughs> more, yeah, more freebies than what I went for. Okay, so that concludes what I do in the room with someone with torticollis. Um, the next phase of this is to head over to the dry needle bay and get those muscles that I talked about. So I'll see you there. Why do you keep that to yourself? I don't know. I just like deal with discomfort. And I go on and then I forget about it. You're a soldier. I'm dealing with other people's discomfort. Hmm. That's what we do. Okay. So, um, to go back to the anatomy I was talking about earlier, mm -hmm. I'm first going to dry needle her levator scap. Um, I'm also going to get mm -hmm. up her trap too because it, it's layered. Um, and with the needle, you're going to penetrate both. So, I come up really high. I find. I find the spinous process. I slide a little lateral. I know I'm on the transverse process. You okay with that, Sabrina? Yes. Okay. And just because she has a little bit of that bilateral pain, I'm gonna do it on each side. But I'm at least gonna try to address these first four cervical vertebrae with a needle. Mm. You felt that one. That's a zinger. That was a zinger. So as is pretty typical, that was another huge one actually. Ooh. Huge zinger. So I'm, I'm really confident that that was 
actually like a levator scap trigger point because I could feel her twitch kind of down there too. That was crazy. That was crazy. So it turns out your levator scap is, is legitimately irritated. Okay. So that's that's the upper part of the levator scap. And then I come in here, I find the superior margin of the scapula. Where is she at here? Yeah. And so the levator scap inserts right around the corner of the scap, just superior to the spine of it. So I'm gonna be careful to sink a couple right. Nice. Right where I know the levator scap lives. Perfect. And then I'm gonna slide just a little superior. I know this is still upper trap, maybe partially mid trap, but certainly mid trap as I get into this region. I'm also going to get her trapped on the contralateral side just because she's dealing with some stuff there. Another huge trigger point on that left trap. Okay, so I'm really comfortable with the needles we have in Sabrina right now. Um, I peppered all the major muscles. If I was feeling adventurous, I might even sink a couple in the SCM, but I'm comfortable that I addressed it with the PNF and soft tissue work in the room. So I think I'm just gonna leave it at levator scap trap and um, what else did I do? Like levator trap, scapula, levator scapula trap. Okay, yeah, I got him. Um, <laughs> so she's gonna cook for ten minutes, um, and this is how we would treat a acute torticollis. If this is something that you have or something that you feel like happens to you regularly, it usually happens to women more than men. Although men can get it too. Um, feel free to stop on in. Um, thank you for watching, everybody. See ya.